Hello and welcome to my demo on how to build a simple HR dashboard using BERT business intelligence reporting tools. Now this is one of many open source options you can use to build your HR dashboard. I just seem to prefer this because of the ease of building the reports, um, the cost which the board report designer itself is free, and then serving it out on a Tomcat Apache web server Again, it's um, pretty relatively easy to set up, and you get a very nice, robust report that can pull in data from many different sources at once and to build a nice dynamic dashboard. So let's go ahead and start looking at what I've done here. And the first thing I did is I downloaded BERT, um, the reporting tool. And if you go to the BERT.org site, you can download this all in one installer and it takes care of it for you. And it, is built upon what's called the Eclipse um, Integrated Development Environment. So there's other things that you can build with the Eclipse, but with this we have BERT uh, reports as one of the options. So I set my workspace up to do that. And this is how I design the reports. Now, if I want to display them over the web, I have to use a web viewer. And we'll talk about that in a moment here, about how to set up the web viewer and display them upon the uh, Apache Tomcat server. For right now, let's take a look at this report, and I won't go through all the details of how BERT Report Designer works because it's a very rich tool and there's lots of things you can do with it. And that's one of the things I like about BERT is that you can take a report and make a simple one, or you can make a very complex multiple page and have JavaScript events or Java events be interspersed so that you can have um, reports that automatically update themselves when you view them on the web, or have parameter reports where the user can put in maybe a zip code or a state that they're interested in. So there's a lot of flexibility and dynamic ways you can build into your BERT report. But we're going to do a simple one here just to show how you can pull from three different data sources and display them in an attractive way. So the first thing I did is I um, went out and got my data sources under my data explorer. And with data sources you can pull them in from all kinds of varieties. So Excel, a flat file, that's the two I've used here. Third one is an XML data source. Now if you're into Hadoop, which is the big data database, or Mongo, or if you want to use JDBC, Java Database Connectors, you can do that. There's also other connectors that you can buy or download from other users to allow you to um, connect to a large number of databases. And you can also create your own connection profile, which I haven't tried before because this is basically a bit enough here, this whole list. So I've created three already, um, one kind of generically a data source, and let's double click and edit on that. And that's my Excel uh, connection, and basically with a lot of this you've got connection profile, property binding, uh, BERT's pretty simple to work with, a lot of this you can just leave the settings on default and you're fine. I do like this nice test connection to make sure it is working and you can ping it, yep. So Excel is up and good, and the Excel file is up on my data, on my um, desktop. Take a look real quick look at it. It's got um, budgets for the offices, these um, demo offices, new hires and separations. And you see how it's formatted. The top line is the column names, and these are the different roles. And you want to keep it straight like that. We'll close that out. And then the next one here is distraction. And this is actually um, something we've been working with in our office called the distraction index. I'm basically pulling this from a flat file and you can test the connection there. Yep, looks like it's got it. The flat file itself is on the database. I mean on the desktop, excuse me. Very simple flat file. This is the column name and this is the row of data. And just to kind of go off and track here a bit, a distraction index is an analytics um, tool or well an analytics index that I got from Killer Analytics and basically what it does it measures how much distraction occurs during the workday that keeps your people from doing productive work. And it's a fascinating chapter in there and really kind of builds into the lean concept with your business processes on how much time is being wasted doing administrative trivia tasks and versus actual real work that you're getting done. So something we were talking about doing and I thought I'd kind of have a little demo with it and let you see how it would look on here. The weather data source is from a XML file off the website here, weather.gov, and this is essentially the forecast 
for the District of Columbia. You can get one for every state and all kinds of different data that you can pull out of it. So we know it works. We're not going to test the connection. And that's the next thing. So we go and we build our data sets. And how we do it is like, for example, with the forecast. So as you can see here, I got the um, data source, do some row mapping, and it's nice. You have wizards help you along the whole way. So it shows you the XML structure of the um, XML source. You can pick and choose out of there within the XML and just use this wizard to basically pull out the data that you want. And the same idea with the uh, text file. I mean, the nice thing about BERT, it does make building these things pretty easy. So simply, since I have one column here, DI, basically all I can pull out. Now with the spreadsheet, I have higher steps in spending. I have several sheets in my worksheet. So I wanted to make sure that I could pick out a sheet and make it a data set of its own. We'll give that a second. And again, it gives me uh, the option of selecting the columns. And I can even do things like computed columns. So for example, I can take two columns here. Let's uh, click on this. We'll edit. And use a little expression builder here. So I can say, OK, with my beginning staff plus my new hires minus my separations. So I can do some calculations there and kind of return that back. And a very full featured expression builder here with all kinds of nice functions and such. If you're familiar with Excel and its expression builder or Access as an expression builder, you can use the BERT one. It's pretty simple. So, and you can see here we got more things. Data cubes, report, fair, uh, report parameters, that's where you can put interactive queries into your um, report so that the user can say, I want to see this zip code or state and different variables. So that's setting it up. So once you have your data set set up, you can then go to the palette and you can pick out different report items. So I picked out a table here. And this is a show of the office, the beginning staff, new hire separations, and that, ex that computed expression. This is a chart. And you can just go down here. And they have a nice charting engine here. And this shows office spending and how that would work. And latest population, another chart. This is my weather, uh, the XML file. And I've pulled that together and made that into a table and bind the columns there. And the distraction index. This is another chart that you have as a can gauge, you know, in all the dashboards we have to have gauges. And it kind of shows you where you are from 0 to 100 on the distraction index. So let's take a closer view. And one of the things you notice when you collect, when you select one of these, you see you have a property editor down here and different properties. So you can set margins, fonts, and all that. You can take a look at your bindings your data bindings, what's in there, row area, columns, maps, all kinds of nice things. And the same thing up here, master page, script. You can put scripts into um, your reports. So for example, on create, on render, on prepare, you can have a nice new event function. JavaScript or Java, whichever you prefer. Let's go back to layout. So let's take a look at something I built earlier. Let's see, let's take a look at the chart. And let's try to, there we go. So you double click it, and it gives you an idea of how you can build it. So you can select your different chart types, select your data. One thing I like about Bird again, the wizards are very intuitive. So you have your data preview down here. You can move columns up and down where you want to the rows. And then you can go next. Excuse me. There we go, format the chart, and put in things like plot, title, plot, whether you want a legend or not, all that. And again, I love this thing about um, BERT. The wizards are very intuitive, and it does a lot of the guesswork for you. Interactivity, I always like to make sure I have that on. And essentially, it allows you to do things such as, you know, basically, on a mouse click, you can hit a hyperlink, invoke a script, show a tool tip. Most part, um, by default, if you turn on the uh, interactivity, Enable chart and interactivity, you'll have a tooltip that'll basically show you the value that you're hovering over. That's a really nice piece. So that's the charts. And let's take a look at a table. Oh, oh and we had a cross tab here. We didn't need that. Okay. 
sometimes you got to watch with um, Bert. Just a little practitioner trip here. Um, once in a while, when you click on here or you look at something, it'll automatically insert into the, the uh, report. It has a pretty nice layout engine, but it does get a little hyper when it's trying to guess what you want. So, we can take a look at different things here. You can also insert tables within tables, charts within charts. In fact, I have a table here for my two, my chart in my um, two parts here, help me on the layout piece. So again, what I'm showing you here is just essentially how we, um, you know, edit, change, put the stuff, put the uh, data in there. So for example, if I want to change offices, as we clicked on here, I can add aggregation, edit that and change it any way you want to. On top here is essentially a header for the table and these are just labels that you can put in. You can click and rewrite those any way you want to. Like I did with change in population instead of change in pop. And you have a re nice report right there. Okay. So once you've saved it, and one thing I really recommend again as a practitioner, save often when you're building a report because it's kind of easy to get um, going and Eclipse is pretty stable, but there's some times when I've had it just automatically stop for me or unexpectedly stop and have to kind of pull that chart back up again or if I didn't save the last time, I've just lost a whole bunch of work I've done. So I often save when I'm working with this. So I'm going to do a run of this. We're going to view report. And I'm going to do it as HTML. And you can see here, you can do it in all kinds of different um, ways. So we're going to test out the report, see how it looks. Now it's been saying it has errors in this, and you look at the detail, the table must be able to access one data set. There's actually a hidden table in there that I clicked and I can't find it, but not a fatal error because I was able to still run the report. So we'll let that go. Give her a second or so. And this will show you what your report would look like if you had it as an HTML document. Now that's one nice thing about BERT reports. You can serve them out as PDFs, HTML, Microsoft um, Office objects, and if you do it over the web, I would highly recommend, and I'll show here in a moment, to use in the web viewer because that gives you some functionality that can really make your report come alive. So it may take a few moments for this to kind of pop up because we're pulling from three different sources. We're opening an Excel file, we're pulling from an XML file, and we're pulling from a text file. And they're doing some calculations here and such. But this is how your report looks. So you can see here, the table fills out nicely, did our calculations for us. And let's see. Go to Office FYI 14 spending. Kind of a little blurry here, it's because it got things stacked on top of each other. But again, that's why we have the interactivity, so you can see the, the uh, buttons. And here, the latest population, or the values, excuse me. Here's the current weather. Now when I built the um, XML, I also used the expression editor so that I can put things like current temp in front of the temperature and wind direction in front of north and 9.2 so that it made the labeling a lot more clearer. There's our distraction index. And as you can see here, we're 32% distracted, which is actually kind of okay. You're in the yellow zone on the distraction index. And we ran this at 9.03. All right. So now that we know our report works and it looks like the way we want it to have it, we can then drop that report into a folder. And now I've done it before where I've dropped reports in different folders and had to go back to re the report viewer. So first of all, let me show you where we're talking about with the report viewer. When you download the report designer, that's a all-in-one Java Eclipse uh, application that you can download and use. The report viewer itself comes packaged and the in install instructions are quite easy. Now I often use um, Alfresco all-in-one installer and if you've heard of an organization called Bitnami, B-I-T-N-A-M-I dot org, they have these nice all-in-one installers. So I put in Alfresco, Alfresco is a uh, document management system which runs off the Apache Tomcat and that's a nice addition to have in your office anyway. But the reason I like it is because it has the entire Apache Tomcat set up for me. That's this little folder here under the alfresco. 
you double click on that, you look for something called web apps. You download the BERT report viewer, it's gonna say web viewer, or I think it's the latest, uh, yeah, the web viewer file. You drop it under web apps, you rename it BERT, and all the stuff you need to display your reports are right there. So as you can see here, I dropped the IRHIM dashboard, report design, under here. Now you can always put another folder in there and just have the report viewers point to it. There's a little bit of programming involved with that, and I don't want to go into that right now, but we can, if you have any questions about that, you can email me or it'll be on my resource page. So let's, um, so you know where it's at. Now let's take a look at this report out on the web. So you can see here, now it's going to my local host, uh, 8080 is where I have the Apache Tomcat server, server, BERT, and then you have a specific URL. You're basically saying, go to this frame set, here's the report name, and the frame set itself is the BERT report viewer. So it'll show your report in its own window because it gives you some added functionality. You can toggle table contents, if there's a table of contents here. You can run the report again. So let's see. When was the last time I ran it? At 8.43. So let's run it again. There are no parameters for the report. We didn't have any built in, so that's fine. Let it process for a second. It gets faster once it's gone through your data connections. That's a good thing. There we go. So it's updating itself. And we ran it at 9.07. Okay. Now you can export the data. So you can pick columns here and all that and export it out as a CSV. Or well, basically all you can export it out is. Or you can export the report all itself. DLC, Excel, PDF, whatever you like. And that's kind of nice to have. So if people go to your website and they see the report and they want to have their own copy, they can of course print it out or download it as a PDF and email it around that way. Or you can print it as a PDF or HTML. So however you like to do that. So that's the BERT report. That's a simple HR dashboard. Again, you can make it more complex. That's the beauty of BERT. You can make it as complex as you want, pull in as many web sources or data sources as you want, and make it uh, very robust. And again, you can have multi-pages. And more advanced features, you can have um, a summary page. I've done that before. And the first page, and then you click on it, you can drill down, you can have sub reports in the report. You can have all this great interactivity. The only thing you pay for, of course, is in processing, you know, through the web viewer and being able to have a good Apache Tomcat web server out there that can handle that connection for you. So that's one example of using BERT. And that's the one I recommend to small and medium sized HR shops. They're just starting building their own online HR dashboards. Again, there's a little bit of a learning curve with BERT, but thankfully there's lots of YouTube. They're on my resource. There's some excellent books on it, and the forums are quite active. You've got a good large user community of BERT report um, enthusiasts. You can learn a lot of good stuff. And the nice thing about BERT, too, is that um, it's a great way to prototype reports before you send them into some proprietary software. So it gives you an idea of what you're looking for and how you want to build out those reports. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you can see the value of BERT and especially for building your HR dashboard.